Good afternoon, my friends. It is a great pleasure for me to be able to step in and speak with you for a few moments and to express to you my other sense of pride and joy for watching you as you proceeded today. When I walked the earth playing, I taught the gifts of the spirit to the best of my abilities and to the best of my understanding at the time. But since I've come into the world of spirit, knowledge has increased, the uh, frequency of the earth has increased, and new information has come forth. And it is a great pleasure for me to see that while you stand on the foundations of what I taught, you have incorporated the new teachings and are using them so well. And it gives me great pride and joy to see that, to see the growth, the spiritual growth that has happened since I am in the spirit world and seeing the seeds that I planted blossom way beyond what I thought they would go. So I am deeply proud of you and humbled to that I had some small part in establishing your path. With that being said, I need to talk to you about another topic, which is very important. You are living in very difficult times. You are living in what the Bible calls the end times, the change between the age of darkness and the age of knowledge, as I used to call it. And it is a time of turbulence. It is a time of doubt. And it is very important for you, as I have said before, to carve out some time to turn into the world of spirit to become the divine crystalline energy and to be, be sit as the power, as it, because it helps to develop your own sense and connections to the world of spirit. For as I've taught you recently, you are all becoming mediums, not to stand in front of a church and give messages, but to hear our guidance and to help others along the way. We've talked about that before, that it's important for you to carve out some time, even if it's just five or 10 minutes. But today I want to tell you, it is also important for you to carve out another small piece of time. And that piece of time, I want you to concentrate on yourself You need to know that to face and walk through the turbulence, you have to have inner tranquility and inner calmness. You have to have some peace of mind. You have to know that no matter what comes forth, you will walk through the storm without any difficulty. Partially because you have the have had and developed that connection to the world of spirit. And we are there to guide you and we will be inspiring thoughts to put into your head for you to follow. But you need that tranquility. You need to take some time to focus on the quiet, not to connect with spirit and not to sit in the power, but to sit in your own tranquility or to say it another way, to walk outside in nature, to hug a tree, to even just sit on your porch outdoors and look at the, at the beautiful sunny day and the clouds in the sky. For that energy of nature helps to ground you and helps to give you a sense of peace. And it's very important that you not only connect with the spirit world, but you have a reservoir of peace so that when the turbulence starts out, 
you can take a deep breath, go into that peace, and then walk forward. So I am encouraging you today to somehow, in your busy day, find a way to relax, find a way to ground yourself, find a way to, uh, to find some peace. It could be taking up watercolor painting if that, if that suits you. It could be coloring with crayons or on a computer. It could be anything you want. It doesn't have to be going outside in nature, but you need to find a way to sit in peace for a little point in time every day. For that also will, grant, will be able to help you in the future. Think of it this way. As you walk your path in your physical life, you are walking on two feet. Well, the two feet I want you to walk on is one, tranquility, and two, connecting with spirit. These two tools will help you walk through whatever happens in the days to come. So I hope you will take this message to heart. And I know many of you have very busy lives with lots of things to do. So what I am asking is not that you have to spend an hour of time on each one, but spend five or 10 minutes to accomplish both of those. It will serve you very well in the future. Thank you, my friends. We are now ready for your questions. Thank you, Carl and friends, for being with us. The first question is from Susan Yu. Can you tell us about the Tartarian Empire? Was it a whole empire that existed around the world and its history has been deliberately erased so we don't know of it, with a fake history put in place for us to be taught about instead? Were there majestic Tartarian buildings here on North America that were destroyed? Were the Native Americans actually Mongolians and descendants from Tataria? Thank you. Any insight is so appreciated. With love, Susan. The civilization that you are asking about were great masters, people who wore, walked around with 100% brain capacity. They could manifest whatever they want. They did not have diseases. They had technology that is way beyond anything that you ever had or have on this planet at this time. They were great, great masters and great people. You are correct that they migrated from the continent of Asia into North America. And they established great, powerful cities uh, that, uh, that were uh, built in North America. One of those was in the Grand Canyon. Mm -hmm. And what happened is, unfortunately, a few of these great people became greedy and became selfish and they wanted to start to control other people. They lost their focus on their spirituality. They lost their focus on the crystalline energy that runs through their bodies and they began to want to control people. With that focus, they started to lose some of their brain capacity. Some of their brain centers began to shut down, especially the ones dealing with the gifts of the spirit because they stopped using them and therefore they atrophied. And eventually they became the uh, instigators and the people who planted the seeds 
for religions. For religion is really a way to control people's minds and control their lives. And it was their intent at the time to bring that forth. The great people in North America, their brains were still working 100%, and therefore they could clairvoyantly see and predict that people were going to come into their territory and try to conquer them and try to enslave them. And they wanted no part of that. So they decided to manifest the rock that is on, in the Grand Canyon and cover their cities because their intent was to come back one day and remove that rock and reestablish their cities. But they did not want to get caught up by the enslavers who were coming. So after they covered their cities in rock, they ascended to another dimension, taking their physical bodies with them into mm -hmm. that into that other dimension. In other words, they increased their frequency of their vibration to the point that it went beyond the speed of light and went into another dimension, and they are still there. They overlook the earth, and they are waiting for a time where the frequency of the earth becomes high enough that, the, uh, that they can safely return to the earth and help bring those who are ready and are open-minded and are working in a spiritual capacity as pe people such as yourselves to help to guide and lead them into this age of knowledge when their species will return to the earth and humankind will reach a spiritual level of love and understanding and knowing that they are divine themselves, having a physical existence, but are divine beings. People today think they are physical people, many of which do not have any spirituality at all. And they are only interested in physical things. So that is the answer that we can tell you. The religions, the people who wanted to control people did rewrite the history so that their civilization and their way of thought was the primary thing that you would know about, and you would not know about these great beings who lived centuries ago before all this darkness engulfed the world. Do you understand? Thank you. The next question is from Luvera. Hello, Carl. Hope this question doesn't come across as being disrespectful. How did Jesus view the use of cannabis? Will it ever be legalized in every state? Thank you. Was that word marijuana? Yes. The smoking of that particular plant creates a change in the brain chemistry to alters one's consciousness. It is something that is pleasurable to human beings and therefore they like to do it. However, that process and the chemical changes that are in the smoke of that plant creates certain psychological and certain changes in the body which may not be beneficial. What I would suggest is that you concentrate on learning how to alter your consciousness without the use of any chemicals. The man who I'm speaking through has altered his consciousness to allow me to come through. 
there are other levels besides the level that he is on at this particular moment, which are even higher, which would allow a person to feel that euphoria that one might feel in a higher state of consciousness without ingesting the uh, chemicals that cause physical changes. So we would re recommend if you are looking for a way to, to uh, the term is get high, to use the phrase get high on life. Learn to change your frequency, learn how to meditate, how to go higher and higher, become the divine crystalline energy because that is raising your frequency. And as you learn to do that more and more, you will become get to a level where the uh, you will feel a joy of being in that frequency. And that so when you need the uh, pick me up that many people are looking for by using that marijuana, you can sit and change your frequency into that same and get that same experience without changing your physical structure. Do you understand? Thank you. The next question is from Carol C. The steeple of the First Congregational Historic Church in New London, Connecticut, built in 1853, recently collapsed. The entire building was a loss and has been demolished. Can you shed light on the cause of this collapse? The congregation seemed to be very involved with helping the community. Was there some dark force involved in this or was it um, any comment would be helpful? Thank you. I spoke earlier about the people enslaving people through religion. No matter which religion you are talking about, it is based on ego more than spiritual truths. The people who created these religions realized that they needed to intersperse certain bits of spiritual truth in order to entice the people into their new way of thinking. But they do not focus on those spiritual truths. They focus on the control, the need to go back every week, the need to put money in their collection plates in order for them to benefit from that money that they do not really have to earn. They do not have to go out for a job and work we work very hard all week. They can rely on what they collect on the collection plates on a Sunday. This whole system will collapse. The collapse of that building is a symbolic Well, symbolic is not the right word. It is a manifestation of the collapse that is going to happen worldwide to all religions. They are all going to crumble. And it is quite, uh, the, quite, uh, let me say it this way. It was not a coincidence that that particular church came down because it was so close to where I lived so many years ago. Spirit decided that that would be part of the message for some people to understand of why this happened. Now, you must understand that in every religion, although it has a corrupt foundation, there is a certain amount of good that happens. And as you pointed out in your question, that congregation was helping people as much as they could, which is a very powerful thing and a very spiritual thing. So 
what you must understand is that these churches and these religions are not 100% evil and not 100% wrong. They do carry out good work. They do have a good good uh, thread that runs through them. But on the whole, if they did not exist, people would continue to do these good works through other organizations that are not tied to control. So churches are going to be coming down, maybe not physically, but they are disintegrating. You can go around and talk to many people, especially people in the clergy, and discover that less and less people are going to churches, synagogues, and so forth. They do not go because they do not benefit that much from it. As I used to teach many years ago, when you are sitting in the presence of a medium and someone who's who's channeling uh, spirit energy uh, through, your soul reacts to that and it expands and it, uh, it, it well, expanding might not be the really correct word. What happens is it frequ- its frequency increases so that it, 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 it expands it gets higher in frequency, which gives you that sense of spirituality and that sense of a, uh, a, um, uh, an excitement and enjoyment and, and, and thrill. Very similar to what we were talking about with the question on marijuana. You are altering your consciousness. Your spirit, your soul is altering your consciousness to a higher, higher frequency. And therefore, you 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 feel that sense of euphoria. Uh, it doesn't, and in that word euphoria, it's a very broad word. So think of it. It's like on a spectrum from one to twenty-five. So it, you you might only uh, go up well, from one to three at a, at a church serv- at a service where you're hearing these things, where there's a much more higher euphoria that can can be experienced. But the fact that you were at zero and you're now at three, that change makes you feel very excited. And that's what happens when you're in the presence of someone who is working through spirit energy. When you are going to a church service, you are are sitting there with a preacher or a rabbi or a, a priest are a minister, and they are not connected to the spirit world. They are uh, repeating the recycled ignorance of times before, of their dogma and their creeds, and trying to uh, to brainwash you to live that particular way and that method and that method alone. And therefore, your soul does not change at all. It stays at zero. So why go? And this is why churches are becoming, are not, their attendance is going down and down, and they are crumbling from within. Not a physical structure as happened as in the church you were talking about, but it is happening all over, except for certain groups where they are so fanatical in their thinking that they don't care about that, and they go because they think they are doing, uh, they're on God's path. And therefore, these people, these religious fanatics, keep going and saying the same things over and over and over and over again, thinking that that God wants it that way, because they were brainwashed to believe that. So that is what the real message is, that we are living in a a time where churches are collapsing, not so much the physical buildings, but the inner structure uh, of the church, the attendance of the church. And as time goes on, more and more of this will happen. And people will be at, will come to a point where they will be seeking other means of spirituality without walking into a building of a church or a synagogue or a mosque. And therefore, they will be seeking out information that you have that you have been learning, and you will be teaching many people in the days to come. Do you understand? Yes, thank you. 
The next question is from Rhonda. Um, recently, a new drug called Ozempic has been getting a lot of interest around the world. It seems to be used for both weight loss and diabetes, and there is a significant shortfall in many places. Am I correct that this is, in fact, potentially a very dangerous drug, which has been cleverly marketed with doctors once again being given kickbacks to prescribe? Thank you. The drug that you are talking about does have benefit for people with diabetes because it helps to bring their blood sugar into a more normal level, which is important to keep the body healthy. One of the side effects was is that there is a certain amount of appetite loss. The drug manufacturers seized that idea and started to uh, promulgate um, the idea that this is a good drug for weight loss. And while it does accomplish that for people without diabetes, it is not the most helpful way of doing it, as you suggest. And there are certain side effects that in this drug uh, and for people who do not have diabetes, the uh, potential danger of it is much more than those that have diabetes. The drug, when it was created, was not intended for weight loss alone. And therefore, uh, people who people have this um, focus on uh, the physicality of the body, and therefore they want to keep it as trim as possible, but they do not want to do the work to do that because diet and exercise is a much more effective way to control that than taking a drug. So it is would be much better for a person who really has that interest to do it the natural way. It is harder and may take longer, but it is, is, is more long lasting. What people will find out is that if they decide to stop taking that drug for weight loss, the weight will start coming back again. Uh, and if they are not careful, they can gain everything back, but they have to, to then uh, control them, their eating habits and their exercise habits in order to maintain that loss without the drug. Uh, air there, as I said, there are there are side effects which can be very serious for some people, and as you already know, people react differently to to any kind of medication, and some people are very susceptible and have very strong side effects, and some people it doesn't bother at all. Uh, it all has to do with the chemistry of the physical of the physical body, and therefore how it reacts to that to the to the particular drug. And there is no way of predicting that without actually doing it. So you are correct. The the um, the drug companies decided to expand their market for this so they could make more money on it, and it expanded so fast that there was a shortage, as you know, well know. Uh, for a while, but um, it is highly recommended that if you do not have diabetes, you should not take that drug. Do you understand? Thank you. The next question is from Susan S. In the current timeline trajectory, can you give us a percentage gauge of where humanity is toward unity consciousness? Thank you.
we would estimate that we would your current situation on your planet would be about a 40 to 42 percent of people who have opened their minds up to uh, an understanding that goes beyond religions. Uh, there would be uh, another maybe 25 percent that are kind of on the fence. They are decided. Uh, they are uh, unsatisfied with their uh, with their religions, but they don't know what to do otherwise, and they don't know of any other alternative. Uh, if you go back into time, uh, back into the let's say mid twentieth centuries, you would probably find out that we measured that there was about ten uh, percent of the people who are uh, were open minded enough to uh, to as you called unity, uh, but uh, so you can see there has been quite a bit of growth since that time. Uh, but more needs to happen before the age of knowledge can be uh, totally established. It is, in a way, you are already in it, but it's, um, if you think about the, uh, the Lady Justice who stands with a blindfold and a scale on her hands, okay? Uh, the scale is not yet balanced, and the scale needs to become uh, unbalanced with more people being uh, in in the oneness than uh, are uh, have their feet stuck in religions. So uh, there's still a ways to go, but it is you're in the process of 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 the change. Do you understand? Thank you. And as a follow up to that. Um, where do you feel humanity's collective focus point needs to be right now to create a successful timeline for our divine remembrance of oneness? Thank you. I will ask you to repeat that, please. Where do you feel humanity's collective focus point needs to be right now to create a successful timeline for our divine remembrance of oneness. We would ask you to take some time to sit and visualize living in a world where, let me start again, visualizing living in the age of knowledge. Visualize what you would conceive to have life to be like at that time. Visualize walking down the street and seeing everyone as a as a god just as you are god visualize everyone walking down the street in love and understanding and not in hatred and suspicion of their fellow man by seeing this and visualizing this you are putting energy into that vision and you are helping the uh, bring light into the world, and you are helping to bring that frequency into the world. It is a way to help to uh, to sway those balances, as we've talked about in the last question, and to help to shift them to get to the point where the the, the, the everyone is living in that age. It is important for you to understand. that many things are really the opposite of what you think. And one of those things is a Christian thinking, Christian teaching. They teach that in the end times, things will get so bad 
that all of a sudden there will be a rapture. And the people who are uh, devout Christians that are following the Christian dogma all the way will be swept up out of this world into someplace else, into heaven. And, and only people who are unchristian will be left behind. As was mentioned before, history is also often the opposite of what you think. And yes, there will be a rapture. And this is what's going to happen. When humanity's consciousness is at a high enough level and high enough frequency. And let me restate that because it was going in the wrong direction. If we were to take the average of everyone's frequency, and when it hits a particular level of enlightenment, the people who are resisting the change, who are living in the darkness, who are living in their religions, are going to be swept up in the uh, rapture, if you want to call it that, to eliminate them from the earth plane so that the whole earth will be in the age of enlightenment. So in other words, the people who are resisting enlightenment will no longer be here so that the planet can enter the, that age. It is the rapture, but it's not the, the it is the Christians who are being brought up, who are being swept up, but it's not because it's a good thing. It's a good thing for the people who are remaining. They're getting rid of the anchors that are holding things down. To say it another way, people talk about things do not live in a vacuum. There is a force, okay? Like gravity, gravity keeps you down. Well, what's going to happen is when the frequency is so high, and when enough people's frequency is high enough, that the people who are not in that frequency will not be able to stay on the planet and they won't be here. And that will cause the, the final unity. So it is really very different than what the Christians believe because they think it's a good thing to be pulled up, but it's not. It's, they are the ones that are holding things down, but they won't be able to do that forever because the, this God always wins. The light will always win over the darkness. It's just a matter of how long it takes for that equilibrium to, that, to reach that particular point to have this happen. I do not know if that really answered your question, but that is the information we can share with you at this time. Thank you. The next question is from Rhonda. With trance becoming very trendy, if you like, with, let me start again. With trance becoming very trendy, if you like, with a huge influx of channelers appearing on the likes of YouTube, it would appear that numerous of these are not in trance, in which case, what would you advise for the naive viewer? Also, the man in trance, in which the man in trance who claims to channel Bashar, is he from the light? Thank you. You are very correct in your assessment that there are people who think that they are in a trance state and have deluded themselves to the point of, uh, of, of thinking that they are a trance medium when in effect, all they are doing is calming their mind down and letting their mind speak. Uh, so they are the source of the information. It is for some people who are sensitive to frequency and energy, 
they can tell quite easily if a person is entranced or not because of the energy they feel from the message. Do Does the message, as we spoke before, when people went to a spiritualist church where there was real mediums, their soul reacted to the information and they felt that sense of euphoria. Are you feeling that sense of euphoria from this information? Does it logically make sense? Are they speaking truth or are they speaking nonsense? Uh, these are all questions that a person should be asking when they see a trans uh, when I, a video on YouTube of uh, of a trans medium. Uh, I would suggest for people who, in uh, with your knowledge, that you only seek out those that are vetted, if you want to say that. Find out what the qualifications are for that medium. Did he go to he or she go to a uh, a school where they studied trance? Where where did they get that education? How did they develop the, the their ability? And that helps to verify that. If uh, unfortunately, not every trance medium is concerned with the integrity of their message. Uh, and whether or not they are in trance. As you very well know, sometimes trance is a bit tricky because it's hard to tell how much is the spirit world and how much is the physical person because in actuality, it is a blending. There are very few mediums these days who can go into a trance state where they are totally unconscious of what's being said. They, that used to be the case for most trans mediums in days gone by, but that is no longer even being taught by the trans mediums. And that gift of unconscious mediumship is a gift. And it is one that not many people can even attain. So you, we are faced with the situation where you are hearing trance messages with blended spirits, such as this one, where the, the, the physical nature of this medium is here as well as the spiritual nature of the spirit communicator. And therefore, it is a blending. And it takes uh, some uh, focus and dedication for the medium to try to keep themselves out of it and not think about what's being said and just to allow what's being said. However, for some people, they are more concerned about the, uh, the glory they can receive from the trans messages, and therefore they are not concerned about that delicate balance, and they are just looking for uh, to feed their ego, to, to say. So what we are saying is that you need to uh, vet out uh, someone that you do not know to find out if, if they are uh, genuine. Things to look for would be whether or not the voice changes, whether or not the accent changes, whether there is, uh, whether it's the flow of their communication. Is there a lot of hesitations and things like that? These are all some indications of, of what is going on uh, with the trance state. So um, as far as the individual that you mentioned, that individual has a bit of a um, inconsistency. Sometimes they are much more entranced than other times. So therefore, it is a bit difficult to know exactly where they are in any particular day. They have not yet reached the point where things are consistent. Do you understand? Thank you. Uh, the next question is from Ann. One moment, please. Um, can you tell us about the Holy Grail? If it existed, was it a solid object? And if so, what happened to it? Thank you.
the Holy Grail, as you are talking about, did exist. It was a wine cup that was used at what you call the Last Supper. You must remember that the man Jesus did not come to the world to establish a religion. He came to the world to teach enlightenment to the people. His disciples, many of which were not totally understanding the message and what and the teachings as he gave, some got, got it strong, understood it better than others. No one gave it any thought about saving that cup because of all the uh, turmoil that happened a few hours later. Nobody can't went back to say, oh, this is going to be the Holy Grail and Christianity is going to want this and we have to save it. They had other things on their mind as their master was losing his life. So it fell by the wayside. You also have to remember that the uh, location of the Last Supper was in an upper room that was belonged to some lady. They kind of rented it for the night. So perhaps it was her, her, uh, her cup to begin with. Uh, it's very likely that they didn't bring their own uh, dishes and tableware with them. So they probably just used hers. And therefore, they, there was no thought about it at the time. Christianity didn't get really established for another 50, 60, 70 years. And it took a longer time for all this theology to be created. There are many people who claim that the Holy Grail was really Mary Magdalene because of the holy bloodline of, uh, that, of Jesus. She was married to Jesus, which is true. They did have children, and uh, and it is thought that some of the uh, royalty lines of, of in Europe descend from uh, from that bloodline. There is some truth to that, but uh, that is more of a, of what the Holy Grail really meant. But uh, the mythology of Christianity that came about that this this uh, this sacred cup uh, what, uh, that was used as the Last Supper was, uh, was preserved and kept somewhere is just that, a myth. Just as the, if you look, look and research into the Christian religion, you will find there are many what they call relics or uh, uh, pieces of things that they feel are holy. For example, there are splinters of wood that came from the cross, the, holy, the cross that Jesus was crucified on. If you think that is true, and if you got, took all the splinters that are around, you'd have enough for 10 crosses. Uh, so there are lots of different uh, um, relics that are in different churches that are claimed to be uh, from the time of Jesus of certain holy things. But you, it is highly unlikely that any of that is actually true because the religion didn't really form for another at least 100 years. So, um, so that is what we have to say on that subject. Thank you. Um, next question is from Carol C. There is a disease present called necrotizing fasciitis, also known as flesh-eating bacteria. Is this natural or is it a creation of the dark side? Thank you. This is a engineered bacteria designed to create havoc on the physical body. It is part of the plan of the people who do not hold light of maintaining control over people. Do you understand? Thank you. Next question is from 
uh, Carol B. Um, I have been watching Liz Cross, a psychic medium and remote viewer. Her bio states that she can tap into anything with consciousness and move the subject forward in time to report back. These probes act as a gauge based upon the current timeline probabilities. She also puts out videos of her probes slash predictions of financial markets, crypto, and current topics and people of interest on her YouTube channel and states that this is her specialty. She also has been known to telepathically communicate with Sasquatch and has encountered four of them, one of which Army crawled up to her vehicle and stood three feet away from her vehicle. She has an interesting take on Source as well and speaks with an entity named Bashar. May I please ask if she is legitimate or not? Thank you. The person you are asking about does have some legitimate qualities to her. She is able to do certain, some of the things that you are talking about. However, you must understand that even though she can take that person and project them into the future, you are only getting the information as of right now. Time, well, that's not right. It is quite impossible to predict the future with 100% accuracy because it is, for, as it is ever changing. Think about standing on a, on a shore of the ocean on a beach and watch the waves. They are in constant motion. They are constantly changing. And the potentials of time is the same way. It is based on reactions of certain things. So in this minute, you could project someone out 20 years and say what is happening. However, in the next minute, another person can snap their fingers or do something and it changes all of it. So that if you projected that same person out, it would be a different outcome. So is it legitimate? Yes. Is it accurate? Probably not because of the changing nature of the future. There are always all kinds of potentials that are need to be considered when doing that. And no one can, can say at what will happen at any point in time in the future. Many questions have been asked here about the future. And you always received a question, the answer that it can't be told accurately and precisely because things are in flux and because the, the potentials are always changing. So yes, she can do it, but is it accurate? Probably not. And especially the further out in time you go. So while she may be able to say certain things financially and so forth, you need to take it with a grain of salt, okay? It might not be exactly as she says. Yet, she might be on, this, on the right track, but it might turn out slightly differently than what she says. So you, that is the way you have to approach time. When, when well, the future is a better way of saying it, because in actuality, there is no time and everything's happening now. So that's the other point of, of, uh, of the difficulty of talking about this whole subject. It's all now. 
It's not in the future. So therefore, even though it's all now, when you go into the future frequencies, you still are, are, are susceptible to all the fluctuations that we've been talking about. So it's very difficult to, to pinpoint that type of thing. Do you understand? Thank you. Next question is from Rhonda. While people seem to be very slow at waking up to what is really going on in the world, is it true many more are waking up to the global warming hoax? Thank you. Yes, that is true. There are many people who are starting to realize that climate change happens and it's going to happen with or without anything that man does. If you went back into time, there was climate change which got which eliminated the dinosaurs and man wasn't around with his fossil fuels creating creating situations. There were ice ages, there were warm times, there was all kinds of changes in the climate. It is natural cycles of the earth's patterns in life. So therefore, people will start to realize that what that these changes will happen whether fossil fuels are used or not. Now that is not to say that there aren't concerns about using fossil fuels. And the people who say that have some legitimate points of view. However, to try to remove it all and send people backwards in time in the Stone Age and put them onto uh, types of, uh, of, of technology of energy that is not ready yet and cannot sustain what, what, the, what people on the earth needs is not a good option. And this is what many of the people who want to bring their green philosophy to, uh, to, to the forefront uh, are confronting. And there is a great backlash to it now for as people are starting to realize electric cars are not suitable for all climates and for all times of year. Uh, that's not to say that the electric cars aren't have doesn't have some sort of benefit to uh, to to the climate, but um, does. It's not quite ready yet. And so it's it's a difficult thing. And can people afford to have both kinds of cars uh, if they need need it in that type of climate? So a lot of it isn't isn't ready, although the idea on on one level is a good idea. The technology is the of of, the, of these electric vehicles aren't perfected enough to become totally reliable on. So yes, people are waking up to that and realizing that they can't. They things are moving much, much, much too fast, and they need to realize that these changes and these warming conditions and the Earth's climate will change whether or not we you eliminate fossil fuels or not. Even though fossil fuels does cause some damage, do you understand? Thank you. Um, does the medium need to stop at this point? Yes, please. Okay, thank you so much. We appreciate everything that you do for us. It is a great pleasure again for us to assist at this time uh, with your questions and concerns. And as we have said before, there are lots of concerns in the, time, in the days that you are living right now. Again, we hope that you take to heart the message that I gave you before about carving out some tranquil time so that you are better equipped to handle the stresses that will come in during the turbulent times. And with that, my friends, I am going to withdraw and leave you with my peace and my love. So be it. <laughs>